Trust in science with a capital S. Trust in science, you science denier. This is the Better Human Podcast. I'm your host, Colin Stucker. One big idea every single day that we're going to talk about to help you think better, think critically, live free, and hopefully become a better human. Because life is about the journey, not the destination. Take action, learn, iterate, get better, live an amazing life. That's what it's all about. Today's idea is this belief in science or trust the science or other of these, as my buddy Kevin Sox says, oxymorons because they don't make any sense. People that claim people are science deniers generally in a very ironically hilarious and absurd way are actually the only science deniers in the discussion are the ones that are claiming someone else is a science denier. It's very strange actually. It's almost a paradox. I have a strange pet peeve when I hear someone say, trust the science or I believe in the science because that's not how science works. It doesn't ask for trust or belief. The foundation of science is built on applying rigorous skepticism about what is observed, given that cognitive assumptions can distort how one interprets the observation. Science doesn't work by consensus or faith. That's one of the problems I've always had, especially with the climate change stuff, when you hear people say, leading scientists believe, or 90% of all scientists or whatever, what are you talking about? Did you know that leading doctors used to use leeches to bloodlet people because they thought it was going to release humors or whatever? I mean, that was a common practice. Bloodletting is what likely killed George Washington when he had a fever. There's other barbaric things throughout history. Doctors used to not wash their hands. Most doctors did not wash their hands. In fact, the guy that proposed that you should wash your hands, he did a research at Vienna Hospital. He proved this through a scientific experiment. Even when he provided his results showing less women were dying through the hand washing experiment, all the doctors at the time didn't want to hear it. They didn't like the idea that they could have caused the deaths or be responsible for that in some way. And so what did they do? They ostracized him. They eventually fired him. And he died crazy because he knew this thing and nobody around him, none of his contemporaries would accept it. And then of course, years later, Louis Pasteur figured out pasteurization and all that. And doctors were like, oh, well maybe we shouldn't handle morgues and then go deliver babies, which is exactly what they were doing without washing their hands. Trusting all the doctors or all the scientists or all the experts at any given time is likely to be trusting something that is factually wrong or missing some very important, relevant nuance. Because that's what the history of science is. The history of science is most scientists being wrong most of the time. The scientific method calls for the formulation, testing, and modification of hypothesis. It does not call for belief or trust, nor does it require consensus. Most of the scientists throughout history that brought new ideas to the forefront, were attacked by their contemporaries. Isaac Newton did not have a good relationship with other people. Uh, Galileo and another guy brought the idea that maybe Earth wasn't the center of the universe, and then he was thus tried for hearsay and forced to recant under pain of death, and he was under house arrest by the Catholic Church. Right On and on it goes. Smoking was fought vehemently by obviously big tobacco, they used to use doctors to advertise cigarettes and then that became illegal and they had to stop doing that on and on and on. These accidental conspiracies, I call them, go and will go. This is just what the scientific method and evolution of ideas and technology is. It is being wrong or doing something ineffectively the majority of the time. <laughs> and those that benefit from the way things are, which is what most people that are doing something, they want to believe they're doing the right thing. People don't want to challenge their ideas or have to admit that maybe they were wrong or whatever. I mean, think about it. somebody that writes a book or papers on some theory or some research they've done, like let's say the plant-based diet, for example. And then we have more and more mounting evidence that a plant-based diet is actually not the best diet and it's lacking in important nutrients the body needs. That person that has done 40 peer-reviewed studies or whatever, or published a book or an article or a blog or a YouTube channel, how much incentive do they have to say, hmm, I guess I should change my worldview. Hmm, I guess I should update my beliefs and everything that I've been saying and recommending to people for literally years. Or my boss or my funding from the big food or Harvard University or these different places that are basically in bed with big corporations that lobby a certain way, I risk my job if I challenge the way things are done. This is how science has become capital S science and is not actually based on science. Anytime that you take the established order and you put a blind trust in that to the point where you even say you can't even question it, you are actually being a science denier. 
You are stifling, preventing science itself, which I think is so ironic and laughable that these very people, in a way to defend their need to not have to think or defend or whatever, they use the term of the very thing they are. Is there not a better example of utter hypocrisy than that? It is what it is. Humans are humans. They're flawed creatures. Every day of my life, I look at these examples of how flawed we actually are. And I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but I am a lot of times. I guess I have more faith in humanity. I have more faith, not in humanity, but honestly, I have more faith that the truth will win out. But the truth does not always win. And sometimes it takes years or generations or centuries for the truth to win out. So the question to ask yourself is, what things in 2021... Are you accepting blindly because the experts told you to, or the government told you to, or some politician told you to? And what are their incentives to keep telling you that? Where are these accidental conspiracies and these flawed incentive models where the status quo does not want to change and those that support the status quo are benefiting by supporting it? They're not benefiting by challenging it. That's what science is. Science is an ongoing process. Science is not a destination. Science is a process. So when you say trust the science, what you actually mean is you should challenge everything. We all should. We should question everything and we should rigorously be skeptical of everything because that's how we get inch by inch closer to scientific fact or truth. That's it for today. Hop on the Better Human Newsletter over at Colin Coach and I'll see you in the next one.